Hello and welcome to the Pots and Trials podcast with me, Martin Fish, joined by Sean Hello. and Jill. Hi. And coming up, we've got um, some questions about uh, celeriac, which I'm going to be having a think about in the kitchen. And then also something else that I can use in the kitchen as well, some cardamom. So somebody's been wanting to have a go at, uh, at growing cardamom plants. And Martin's got some uh, top tips for apple pruning and also... Um, the, the fact that this time of year could be the time to make those repairs to the lawn. That's right, yes. But before that, I've been out and about. I've been up to the Snape Gardening Club in North Yorkshire, where they've been asking me lots of questions. OK, it's David Milner from Snape. Uh, mine is a vegetable growing question. Um, I've had several goes at trying to grow celeriacs. Um, they grow nicely. To a, large, to a reasonable extent, but they don't get very big. So I've never grown them much bigger than at a tennis ball. But I see them in the shops, big as footballs. Now, how do I grow them as big as footballs? Right, OK. Yeah, but a football might be a bit woody, David. So let's go in between, okay. shall we? Shall we go golf? Uh, let's go uh, cricket ball. Um, I think um, don't, the secret is don't start them off too early because right. they don't like a checking growth when you put them out. Right. Are you sowing them directly into the garden or are you sowing them in pots or I've modules? Tended to, I've tended to grow them in pots or modules, but I've also bought plants. Yeah, you know, thinking that I, I would have a better chance of success. Yeah, no, but I, I, I have the same result. I think that's the best way. Start them off uh, if you've got a cold frame or a little greenhouse. Start them off in spring. Get them growing uh, in some. Uh, cell trays or small pots they don't like a checking growth so you've got to keep them growing right. they're quite greedy right. um, so if they run out of nutrients then that gives them a checking growth and almost stunts them um, so as soon as the weather's fine sort of May time get them out in the garden good rich soil um, improve it with some compost or well rotted manure water them in and then they need constant moisture they don't like right. a dry period right. so if you've got a well drained soil yeah. that is prone to drying out make yeah. sure in the summer you you water them good soaking leave them for a week good soaking and and hopefully that way they'll make more growth and that the root will swell out for you do i need to take off the leaves some as the grow, as the plant grows, do, you, do I take off the outer leaves to uh, only, expose the, 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 the bulb? No, because the, in theory, the more leaf it's got, the more it's photosynthesizing yeah, yeah, and making yeah. food. Uh, if they go yellow yeah, or yeah, brown, yeah. take them off. But you've got to give it quite a, a good growing season without the checking growth and plenty of water yeah. and plenty of nutrients. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you. We'll have another go this year. Yeah, have I've a go. Seeds. I was going to sell my seeds at Christmas, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't now. No, I, I would wait a bit because yeah. I think, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want to get them in your cell trays for too long because then they'll get a bit root bound yeah. and that checks them back. So I'd wait. You know, yeah. March time would be yeah. probably fine. Yeah. Yeah. You've got another one as well, yes, haven't you? Yes, I've got a, um, a, a small lean to greenhouse, which is south facing. Um, it's, it's eight by six. Uh, and at one end, I had a propagating frame, a nicely framed thing with insulation and sand and everything. And I put the, the, the cables in and I used it for a season and it cost me an arm and a leg. So I can't afford to use it. So I've turned it into a little alpine bed. So I've got the sand in there and I've got all my alpine plants in terracotta pots of different sizes. And I bought plants from you know, a, a recognised nursery who said they were suitable for blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, but some of them have just died off. Uh, and some don't seem to be too happy uh, and they've got them in pots stood in this in the sand it, is any tips am i doing anything wrong it's a, it's, it's a, 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 a an unheated greenhouse they've got the window open there's plenty of ventilation i don't water them now obviously because it's too too cold but yeah any okay. tips any tips really well i mean if they are alpines they should be totally hardy yeah, so um they need a well-drained compost yeah, okay. so uh if you are doing any repotting don't use an ordinary multi-purpose compost no, i use john linney's number two with 50 uh, percent grit right yeah. so that should be yeah. ideal yeah. um and you know as you say rightly so you can water but sparingly at this time of the year um, and if it's a good well drained compost it should drain through anyway yeah. um, I mean it sounds like you're doing everything yeah, right yeah. so just, I mean is there any particular types that have died off well, I can't remember to be honest yeah. um, no I don't I can't remember no. the name because they're all Unfortunately, they're all long, long, they're all Latin long names, Latin names yeah. and I'm not very good at but, remembering but the Latin you, names. I mean, you're doing, yeah. you're doing yeah. everything yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to repot them, 
pop them in the spring so they've got the summer to establish yeah. before they go on to the, the bed in yeah. there. Yeah. But you know, they, they should be plenty of ventilation so they've got the air blowing through them. The cold shouldn't bother them right. really. So mm -hmm. I think you've just I mean, been unfortunate. I said at the moment, I've got them in individual pots stuck in the, in the sand. Would it be better basically taking the whole lot out and make, putting soil and, and grits and stuff in there and then planting them into that and then putting a layer of gravel on the top? Would it be better? I wouldn't yeah. for the simple reason the way you're doing it is you can alter your yeah, display yeah, yeah. a little bit like they do up at Harlow yeah, yeah, Car. Exactly, yeah. If you've got some that are good they can go yeah. there. If they finish flowering and need a rest they can go somewhere out yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. So I would do it as a, a display bed where yeah, you can have... What I've got. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, don't give up. Get a few more yeah, and have a go good. next year. You mentioned Harlow Car. I mean, that's my target place to go at Harlow Car is the Alpine House. I just love the Alpine House. It's, there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank good you, good. David. Cheers. Sue from Carthorpe. I've got an aeonium uh, that's grown too tall and I want to take some cuttings from it and I want to know if I can take a cutting from the, from the top and then cut off the bottom and then can I take cuttings from the middle section? Right, so it's got quite a tall stem. It has, yeah. Right, so normally what you would do is yeah, take the top section off, it's almost like a single trunk and you probably want the top rosette of leaves and a, a stalk of about three inches long, yeah. cut that off with a sharp knife so it's a clean cut yeah. um, and before you insert that into the compost let it dry somewhere cool for 24 hours, it just almost seals it over uh, and then what you could do, I mean normally you wouldn't because what would happen is from the stump that's left, the buds at the top of that stump would then grow and you'd get new shoots growing but if you don't want a long stump you could cut that down and maybe you could try it it would just be like a piece of wood basically a piece of the, the stem with no leaves on it but if you keep it the right way up and could maybe cut them off at four or five inches put a couple of inches in the compost leaving the top of the stump out if it roots from the bottom some dormant buds may well form around the top of that bare piece of stem and you'll get a new plant so it's certainly worth a go yes thank you and and would they still dry off the bottom bit first for 24 hours yeah always do that with aeonium so um you know just cut them leave them somewhere for a little while and then put them in after 24 hours thank you thank you That's wonderful advice about the aeoniums, but just one additional question. What's an aeonium? <laughs> <laughs> good, good question, yes. Join us later for the answer to that one. Yes, no, because we've got a few more questions coming up as well later. But to answer your question, Sean, an aeonium is a, a succulent plant. It's sort of a subtropical, so it's a tender one. It won't stand any frost. Um, and there are lots of different types of them. The ones we tend to grow are Aeonium, I think the Arborea or something like that, which would eventually branch out and make, almost looks like a little miniature tree, but it's got these fleshy stems with quite fleshy leaves in rosettes. They're, they're really attractive and you can get them in all different colours now, variegated ones, purple ones, green ones, and they're, they're very, very in fashion. And they're great to have outdoors in pots in the summer, but in the winter they do need to be brought inside. Where, where are they from? Are they native to you know one of these sub-saharan type places or yeah well yeah sort of subtropical so not not deserts as such um but yeah they're very popular they, they've been around for a long time but there seems to be a sort of resurgence in them and lots of new varieties coming along and very easy to propagate and if you you know as the question said they tend to get tall and leggy so you can chop them down and use the bits you cut off to make new plants almost like a pollarding uh, of them Essentially, yes, it is. That's right. It's yes. like so I know your, somebody's your gardening terms, like I've been listening all, all these <laughs> years to what you're saying. Exactly, say. yes, yes. <laughs> now, I just want to pick up on something that David was chatting about because yeah. he was asking you about celeriac, wasn't oh, he? Oh, was, yes. And I think that's a highly underrated veg. We haven't grown celeriac for a little while. I think mm. maybe it should be on the list for uh, for this year. Um, but it's it's. Have you had? Have you tried celeriac, Sean? Yeah, it's yeah, sort I of really like quite it. A, a, got a celery flavour, hasn't it? But it's got that nutty earthiness as well. It's, it I might have mis um, misremembered. I'm, I was thinking it was kind of a bit like fennel as well. Is it like fennel as well? Is it more sort of celery? -y? More, mm. more celery. Yeah, yeah. more celery. It is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have but definitely had it. I've, to... I've had it as mash. 
with Matt or with Matt? Yes, mm. I was going to say, yeah, very easy to cook. So you can just boil it uh, about 20 minutes or so, depending on the size of your chunks. And then when it's tender, just mash it. Uh, and it roasts really nicely as well. So in chunks and then just roast it for about 40 minutes or so. Um, the classic celeriac dish is a remoulade, which is it cut into to matchsticks. And then you can mix it with some mayonnaise, some lemon juice. You could add some carrot in there as well. So that's a really nice sort of way. It's not cooked, of course, so you, you're getting that crunchiness. But going back to the mash, really nice way of cooking it. So if you're doing, say, a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie, um, then make your sort of filling as normal and then chop up your celeriac and pop it into a pan with some milk, cook it in the milk, add in some seasoning as well. So a bay leaf's quite nice in there, salt and pepper. And then uh, when it's nice and tender, then just mash it or blitz it in the milk. So you're getting that gorgeous creaminess. Uh, you could add in some Parmesan cheese as well, maybe a dollop of creme fraiche or yogurt. And then use that mash to top your shepherd's pie or cottage pie. And it's mm. a really nice way of using it. Mm, from so we definitely need to get mm. some. Well, we do. I'm, I'm just literally flicking through the Well, I the thought you just got the paper out catalog. there, Martin. I could all this no, paper no, 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 as well. Yeah, was yeah. talking. I thought, what's he doing? He's just going through his paper in the crossword. <laughs> It's rude. It's rude. I um I've just got off the shelf the King Seed catalogue and they've got a couple of varieties of celeriac Good. in there. And there's one called Asterix, mm. an F1 hybrid. So I think nice. that's the one to Put grow. It on and, the list. and it's interesting. I'm just reading their description of how to grow it, which mm -hmm. more or less fits what I said to David. So that's, that's good. good. <laughs> but I gave you the check correct the answer. Make sure you swayed nice by the names, as well. just out of interest. Do you get swayed by the names? Because I like. Yeah, I do. I used to like yeah. reading Asterix comics. So if there's an Asterix comic, oh, right. I'm, yes. I'm up for that. Well, they, they do too. They do Asterix. Um, which is an F1 hybrid, so a modern one, and then they do uh, an old variety called Giant Prague. Um, I just don't that know. Looks that looks a bit of a beast. It's a big that one, one so yeah. I'm going to go for the the, the faster growing hybrid one, and mm. we can look forward to that. It makes good chips as well. If you just cut them into chip shapes, and then you can really? air fry them. Yeah, toss them in a, oh, in a bit of oil, definitely. and then a little bit of curry powder on there as well. Just mm. really matches the flavour. I'll nice. give Kings a ring mm. tomorrow. Well, definitely. talking of Kings, we've got Kings coming up on the podcast, haven't we? Someone from Kings. We have. We're going to be talking to um, their horticultural director, Andrew Toakley. Um, yes, uh, next week we'll have mm. him on. We're going to talk about flowers and vegetables and, and, and literally how they get the seeds in the packets and to us and all about the company. Oh, so, yeah, that's mm. one to listen yeah. out for. That, that's superb as the dog starts barking. Shortly we're going to have a question or answer a question about an ornamental banana. And if that tickles your fancy and you've got something ornamental you'd like to ask about, drop us an email, info at potsandtrials.com. Uh, and you can ask Martin a gardening question, which we'll answer on the podcast. So just, yeah, get your questions in. So shall we go back up to Snape and get a few more questions? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Uh, I'm Sarah from Snape. Um, we have got two variegated Fatsia japonicas in containers outside. They're in dappled shade. They flowered. The flowers have, have now gone, but the leaves are just sprouting from the bottom and not from the top. Is that normal? Um, it can be. Uh, I mean, when they flower, it's usually sort of November time and they've got those unusual flowers. Quite attractive, aren't they? Uh, and it's obviously the middle of the winter now, so um, normally the stems will produce new leaves from the top, the buds, those big fat buds at the top, but occasionally, if for whatever reason it's had a bit of a check, you'll get new growth coming from low down. So it's not a problem. I mean, it might be that top bit may die off, but you've got new growth coming from below. So for now, I would leave it, because you know, it's only middle of January. Wait until we probably get into March, April time. If you think a little bit of it isn't looking very good, you, they will respond really well to pruning. So if one of those longer stems that's a few years old isn't looking very good, just cut it down with a pair of secateurs to where there's some side growth below. All the energy will go into that and it'll make really nice, strong plants. So I wouldn't worry. I mean, it's winter. They always look a little bit tatty. I've got the same plant at home in a pot and it's, it's not looking its best at the moment. But once it's got a month of new growth in the spring, I'm sure yours will be fine. Okay, lovely. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. Hi, I'm Margaret from Snape. I have a cardamom plant which flourished when we first got it. It's about two and a half years we've had it. Um, then the leaves started turning brown a lot um, and we were pulling them off, but then they kept going. Uh, we cut it right down, so they're now just beginning to grow again, about two or three inches. 
it's never flowered and it is supposed to. I never know whether I'm overwatering or underwatering. Right, well I've got to be honest, so I've never grown one so I, I haven't got experience but you, it's a tropical plant isn't it so um, obviously it needs some warmth um, and ideally it wants to be somewhere where it doesn't drop too cold at night so in a, in a house I would think would be fine but if you've got it in a, a conservatory or a porch that gets cold at night it won't like those fluctuations in temperature obviously this time of the year it won't be growing anywhere near as much uh, as it would do in the summer um, so it's more a case of ticking it over. Don't overwater it. Um, although tropical plants can often stand a lot of water in, in the summer when they're actively growing, in the winter they can soon get waterlogged. So keep it moist but not wet. And then I think what I would do is in the spring when the days start to lengthen and they will naturally grow, then maybe a little bit of feed, um, just a house plant fertiliser. It sounds like it might need a bit of a boost. Good light. Probably not direct sunlight, but yeah. good bright light and, and a little bit of feed. And I think hopefully that will then nurture it on. Um, I mean, you could have you, is it in the same pot as when you bought it? Yes. So what you could do as well, maybe in the spring, is just carefully see if you can take it out of the pot to look at the root. And if the roots look very congested, then that would be a good time to go into a slightly larger pot, just a, a multi-purpose compost. Um, because then it can get the roots out more. If it makes more root, hopefully you'll get more shoots. But so you could, I wouldn't do that now. I'd wait until the spring, ticking over for now, and then a bit of feed, maybe a bigger pot, and fingers crossed you'll get lots of lovely lush foliage and, and those flowers that you're after. Lovely. Thank you very much, Martin. I'm Richard Paul from Snape. My question is, how do I overwinter Ansetti Morellii? Oh right, so this is a, a, basically an ornamental banana, isn't it, with those lovely big, big red leaves. Um, yes. where, where have you got it growing at the moment, Richard, or where was it growing this summer? Well, I bought them the, the new plants this summer from a, a nurseryman, and uh, when the, when the uh, frost had all gone, I just planted them out in the garden, um, and that was it. And they've grown very, very well, they're spectacular plants. Uh, they, they sort of stand out very well. Um, it's just that I, I can't overwinter them. I, I've tried several times and it never seems to work. They always rot away and they are quite expensive. So I would like to try and find a way of doing that. OK, right. Well, what I would do in the future um, is rather than take it out the plant pot, you buy it in and plant it into the garden, um, I would pot it up into a larger pot uh, and then plunge that pot into the ground so it's still got the stability some of the roots will grow through the drainage holes down um, lift it um, when the weather turns colder in the autumn before we get any damaging frosts on it um, and don't cut the I mean it's going to have some big big impressive foliage so I'd lift it with a pot any roots that have grown through you can slice off it needs to go somewhere frost free you can almost let the compost dry out you can keep it just moist but certainly not wet because you don't want the roots to rot and then i would wait until the foliage naturally tries to die down i mean if it were growing in a jungle situation it would just keep going and going but a cooler temperature will some of it will die down and dry off a little bit and then when that starts to happen then you can cut some of those leaves off gradually it might be you leave one or two of the center ones in if they still look healthy those sort of tight ones in the center um, and that way um, it's not giving it a big shot because if you dig it up in the autumn and cut everything off it's very fleshy and very wet very fleshy with water inside the, the leaves yeah. exactly and then it, it rots set in so it's almost letting it dry out naturally itself keep it it doesn't need a lot of heat but you need to keep it you know several degrees above freezing yes. I mean in a way the warmer the better yeah. um, and then in the spring when the days get longer and you get the first sign of growth you can start to give it a little bit of water uh, and nurture it and a bit more as it grows and then eventually it can go either into a bigger pot back in the garden or just plant the whole thing back in the garden so fingers crossed Let's this hope time for better results next time thanks very much good luck okay. 
So did you ask Margaret what she wanted to grow her cardamom for? Because you assumed it was for the flower, but you know, I'm looking at it from the culinary aspect. Did she really just want the seeds? Because you can use those in quite a lot of cooking. I'm, for I'm some thinking gorgeous of it from flavor. a curry knee. Cur- yeah. Culinary yeah. Curry. Yeah. I, I think she did want it. Um, she said you can eat the leaves as well, didn't mm. she, when she was chatting to me? So I, I don't know whether it's just a challenge to try and grow one. I mean, I've never grown it. No. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't really, I was sort of winging it a little bit. I mean, I know it's a, a tropical plant. Um, it needs warm temperatures. Um, I think growing in its natural environment, it gets quite big, but in a pot, it's going to be restricted. So mm. um, yeah, I think she just wants to succeed with it and hopefully get something out of yeah, it. Yeah, well, if you get the seeds as well, then it's a bit of a bonus because, you know, it's not only sort of the curry flavouring but um, you can use them in some desserts as well and of course chai is very popular as a drink at the moment If you, I think you can get it's it in all the big cardamom, coffee though. chains it, it has cardamom oh, seasoning in it the flavours because it's essentially it's a, a blend of spices that you leave to infuse in, in milk so if you heat your milk up if you yeah. want a, a sort of milky one mm. um, so cardamom uh, cinnamon nutmeg ginger if you want a bit of warmth in there as well and sweetness so you want some sugar in there as well and then your black tea so put your tea leaves in there as well let that infuse in the warm milk and then you strain it so you're not risking getting any of those little shell bits in your it's teeth. Like, it's almost a bit like russian roulette with those cardamom pods and yeah. you know, certainly find <laughs> with some, of, some of the rice you get anyway sorry go on yeah so yeah strain that and then that's that gives you your gorgeous chai tea right. or chai latte as well so uh, so yeah really nice one very warming and comforting it's a good winter drink i always mm. think well we'll have to get a plant i mean it does need um a minimum of 15 degrees C so it's uh, it's one that would need to be kept somewhere nice and warm right. during the winter months so in, in a house really it's uh, you wouldn't be able to grow it not in our house no, not with this weather <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know where you'd get a plant from either. It's not one mm. I've ever seen for sale, well, so I'm not sure. Maybe one to look for at shows. Season, maybe and show season stars. I have actually looked it up. It's called uh, Elateria, is its botanical oh, okay. Elateria cardamumum. Cardamumum. So, so, so um, I, I'll <laughs> look out for that because it looks like it's quite a nice. What's the word? Sorry. Uh, it, it looks like a quite. Uh, attractive foliage plant so I think it would okay. work well in the house mm. and with the added bonus I didn't realise that that was a, a obviously I'm not the cook in the house <laughs> and I've never cooked a curry in my life I didn't realise it was such an important ingredient in mm. a curry well some people it's yeah, it's a bit I think some people like to leave it out because of the it's quite floral isn't it the, the yes. flavour yes, so, so yes. some people yeah, there are definitely uh, I, you know I've, I've met people anyway who say well oh, you know, get those out, take them out straight away, those pods, because mm. I don't want them. But mm. then I think that's more mm. about accidentally biting into one, which is... Yes, is, it would put you off oh, a bit. See, right. but, but it's very, it's quite sleep-inducing as well, so a lot of people would use it to flavour a bedtime drink. So mm. Like chamomile yeah. sort of mm. type thing. Mm. Yeah. What is interesting is that, you know, the people of the Snape Gardening Club, I mean, up there near Beedale in North Yorkshire, quite a cold part of the country in the winter, you know, they are growing some... Interesting tropical plants mm. up there. Well, very, so, it's very you know, exotic, it's, isn't it? They're quite adventurous gardeners. I mean, ornamental yes. bananas, cardamoms. I mean, you know, perhaps <laughs> yeah. it's that yeah. a yearning for the sort of tropical weather that's uh, driving. Maybe. Them. Mm. Well, they do a plant sale as well, don't they? I so think maybe they're that's thinking, one of, it. They're thinking of doing it. Yeah. They're, they're a lovely gardening group. I've been talking to them um, for a number of, since they started. I think they reminded that last night when I was there that um, I was their very first speaker. So uh, oh. when they launched the garden club, and they're very enthusiastic. Mm. So it's always good to go up and, and see. D- and them. did they have um, electricity back then, Martin, or was it? Oh yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. It was all. Yeah, well, it was. Somebody was pedalling. To, to, it was a little generator to get it in there. Yes, and then we had candles as well. It was good. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, if you've got a gardening question for Martin, drop us a line, info at potsandtrials.com. Time now to find out what we should be doing in our gardens, Martin. What, what have we got on, yes. the, on the slate for the week? Well, main job for Mrs. Fisher and I, and if you're welcome oh, to dear. join us, Sean. <laughs> Don't like the sound of it. Ride that. Well, we've got a big, big brute of a Bramley oh, apple tree okay. that needs some serious pruning. Um, it's, it is an old tree, I suspect. It's probably a hundred plus years old. It's uh, a tree that was in our, is on our garden from years ago when it was an orchard, and it's the only apple tree that was left in the garden. Mm. But it's been pruned years ago, quite harsh with a chainsaw, I think. So it it's, needs reshaping. It's got a lot of new growth that we don't need. So I think it's going to be quite a slow, long job. Um, the temptation is to do a lot to it. 
Um, but then it's going to make even more grow. So I think we're going to probably have to do it over a couple of seasons, to be fair. So it's thinning it out. It's very congested in the centre, taking out all that weak twiggy growth, thinning it out, reducing the height because it's made some very tall growth, you know, for 15, 20 feet going up. So it's a case of one of us climbing in the tree. <laughs> can I go on your shoulders? You can go on, and then <laughs> taking some of those higher branches down to side you. So it is going to be one of those, take a bit out, stand back. What we'll do is we'll actually film it and, and use it mm. as one of the Pots the and Trials videos oh, yeah, um, yeah. To, to give an idea. So I must admit, I'm not quite sure where to start. I think it's just a case of get stuck in and do a bit and stand back and look and keep That's doing Well, you're it, very so. good because you do keep going at it don't you and you'll you will stand back and you'll mm. have another look at it and you'll find a bit more and you you are quite good at I, it i always think when you're pruning whether it's a fruit tree or an ornamental tree you've got to sort of picture the tree and almost see within the bigger tree the smaller version of it within it the shape mm. that you're looking for mm. um, and if you can sort of set that into your mind and then take a few branches off come back and think yeah i can take that one off take that one off thin that out mm. but you must keep getting picture down on the ground you need to go yeah we yeah. need to go to and, and wander around and, and have a look so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that it's going to be oh, quite good. hard work isn't it but my end vision is to have this gorgeous apple tree um but what i'd like to do is have a seat of some oh, sort around nice. the trunk because the trunk's quite big isn't oh, it oh i would think um, we're both doing it with our hands we now. Are, which I working really well for the podcast. Now, but I mean, <laughs> it is, isn't it? I would think the the, um, that big. <laughs> the diameter, not the circumference. Yeah. The diameter is probably about forty-five centimeters, about eighteen, 18 inches, inches. So, like that, yeah. so yeah. So yeah. can we craft a, a wooden seat of some sort that will go round all the way around the it trunk? Would that really would be nice really nice if we could find somebody that could do that. I, I don't know if I could do that out of an old pallet, but yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll have a go. It's it would be nice to see. Place it around. Yeah, a lovely old raw time one would work yeah but yeah uh. have you got a welder sean <laughs> <laughs> could you do a bit of welding um, yeah i think welding's outside soldering i can do a bit of soldering but i'm not sure that okay. would be oh, enough. Okay. i'm not sure so, so yes I, I well that will that keep us great. busy well that's one thing that if people haven't seen our videos that's one thing that i think you'll find is quite good we're not necessarily always going into the perfect manicured gardener's world garden and trying to show no. you what to do with those things we're looking at real world uh, uh you know gardening challenges mm -hmm. let's put it that way we are yeah. and you know ours is very much a project garden so we're starting from scratch mm -hmm. so yeah you see it warts and alls and everything yeah. um, the other thing we do need to do um you know when the ground is suitable to work on because we've had it very wet we've had it very frosty um but when we can go on the lawns without causing any damage we've got some repairs to do there, there are some holes i don't know how they were there but there's some dips in the lawn so i need to lift a some squares of turf, get some soil in there. So if you've got any problems on your lawn, you know, like the edges are crumbling around the borders or you've got any warm bits, then, you know, this is a good time, you know, late January into February is a good time to do those repairs. Not seeding, this is lifting turf, relaying it and, and making up the levels. So that, I think with that, more or less, uh, and the apple tree, that's going to keep us well, quite thinking busy. about apples as well, I noticed that some of our apples in store are about coming to the end yes, of their life. So I think it's a perfect excuse to have a, a, a batch cooking day in the kitchen and cook up a load of apple puree. You can do some crumbles, Ooh, a bit of pie. Have a bit of cardamom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe a slice of banana in there <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, apple pie. We need to use them because, yeah, yeah, they are coming to the end now, yeah. aren't they? So, yeah. But we, what we have still got, I noticed in the shed, which is very cold, well, there are still three marrows <laughs> that are in perfect condition. Blooming marrows. Really, really firm and, and hard. So... What can we do with I those? Can we, can we? I'm a bit marrowed out. Shall we I'm stuff honest. a marrow? Oh, yeah. We're back to stuff yeah. marrows again. I think that's probably <laughs> right time to leave Martin and Jill to have that conversation about stuff marrows, <laughs> and uh, we'll be back again uh, same time, same place next week. See you then. Watch the videos on YouTube or Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or X, and subscribe to the podcast and never miss a thing. For more information, go to potsandtrials.com.